33 minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santos Show. Coming to you live from the South Coast here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It's, uh, as I said, getting a little chilly here today, so the coat goes back on. Um, here in uh, Studio A as we uh, make our way to the weekend. Looking forward uh, to that uh, here as well. Um, look, folks, our next guest is, uh, you tell him why he's a renaissance man. He has uh, really um, done his uh, great Democracy Watch uh, news uh, department uh, very proud. Um, he's got some interviews with uh, the Democratic State Party chair, uh, Ms. Podolsky. Uh, you know, had a chance to get uh, some sound from Elizabeth Warren and uh, Vice President Harris. So he's a busy man over the past week, and we'll try to get to some of that uh, video and audio uh, coming right up. And, of course, get his thoughts on this uh, horrific uh, day in American um, history, in American political history. And, again, our prayers uh, go out to for a quick recovery to uh, Paul Pelosi, the, the husband of Nancy Pelosi. And, um, you know, it is uh, sad. This is our society today in which we attack people because we disagree with them with hammers and other devices. You can do better, folks. You've got to get more decency, too. All right. Somebody who's a decent man is Democracy Watch News Executive Director. He is, of course, uh, a Renaissance man, a great musician, too. He's our good friend, MTC. We certainly use more like him. Uh, Mark, thank you, my friend. It's uh, one of these days where it's uh, both somber but you know, the idea to keep fighting on is just there too, my friend. Welcome. Oh yeah. MTC is definitely in the house. We could use that right now. Hey man, great to see you. Good to see your glasses too, man. Uh, sometimes we don't get to see uh, the whole kit and caboodle of MTC in the house. Hey, dude, you know, this is, uh, we thought uh, going into last night that uh, you know, we wanted to really get you to, um, you know, talk to us and, and um, you know, get a perspective of what you saw this week with Warren and Harris and your, uh, your, your interview with the great state party chair. Some really interesting stuff there. And then, of course, uh, uh, what happened this morning in San Francisco, um, you know, really has made this sort of a, a really Debbie Downer kind of day. Um, if you believe in democracy, which, of course, what's the name of your title of, of your organization? Uh, I don't know how you feel as an American, as a, as a person who values free speech. You've, you've talked to us about, you know, um, Doctors Without Borders, Reporters Without Borders. Um, you understand, you know, the idea of, of covering uh, the uh, disturbances, you know, from Seattle and other parts of the country. Um, I don't know. I, I, I tell you, I just, uh, I'm at my wit's end that I think we need to really start speaking out, um, not only as a progressive movement, but as pure patriotic Americans. Because uh, this can't stand, you know, we cannot continue to allow violence um, on anybody that you disagree with, uh, right or left. And again, the majority of this is all coming from the right. You know, you see it in Arizona with voting. You see it um, around the country, uh, you know, in the hate mail towards so many people, including our, our friend AOC. This has to stop, man, and it's a sad day. Your thoughts, Mark? Well, it is a sad day in, in terms of that. I was doing the Tom Hartman show earlier when that broke, so it kind of caught me off guard. And I'm I'm not liking what I'm hearing in terms of the condition of, of Mr. Pelosi at this point because the, the preliminary indications were that he was going to be fine, but it's not sounding good now. So, yeah, we have to, we really have to talk about uh, peaceful transition in this country and... Uh, and we really need to keep in, you know, cooler heads need to prevail. I think that, especially leading up to this midterm election, I, I can say thank you to our Attorney General uh, Merrick Garland for um, barring the FBI um, through the auspices of people like Trump in the past to, you know, search uh, journalists' records. 
So I appreciate that. That's definitely a step forward for freedom of the press, and I'm sure Reporters Without Borders and the Committee to Protect Journalists and other organizations that I've worked with are happy about that. Um, and then, you know, it has been an incredibly busy time for a reporter like me uh, with Elizabeth Warren in town and then Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, the Democrats here are definitely pulling out all the stops, Jeff, because they're very worried about Tiffany Smiley. Uh, uh, she's running uh, higher in the polls every time they, they do a poll. The latest Seattle Times King TV News poll shows her around 41%. Uh, but at least 10% are considered undecided at this point. And considering yeah. some of the last minute you know, conversations we had before the 2016 election, right? Don't count your chickens before you hatch and don't always oh, believe yeah. the opinions or the, or the uh, statisticians or polls. So I'm worried that we may be in one of those positions again. I don't know. Um, all I can say is that the Democrats started to panic a little bit there and they did bring in uh, Governor Inslee to two different events uh, with Patty Murray one with Kamala Harris down at Lumen Field, where she actually introduced, uh, this was a nationwide story, she actually introduced a hundred billion, or a hundred, uh, or one billion, sorry, dollars in grants for electric school buses to provide, uh, at this point, 2,500 electric school buses to districts around the country. So she chose Seattle as a place to announce that. But you have to also bear in mind that, considering the tight race between Patty Murray and Tiffany Smiley, who is a mega-backed, Trump-style Republican who oh, yeah. questions the 2016 election. Considering that, it might be one of the reasons why uh, the White House decided and the Democrats decided to send um, the vice president here to Seattle on the heels of Elizabeth Warren, who was very outspoken during her speech for Patty Murray at that, fund, uh, at that campaign rally at the Seattle Center. Um, Elizabeth Warren said that any Republican candidate who accepts MAGA or Trump is in collusion with the January 6th insurrectionists. So they, she's definitely being used as their attack dog, and she was very strong and fiery, and, and it was great uh, in, you know, getting footage of her because she's such a great um, person when she's on the, on the stump. Um, also, Pramila Jayapal, our friend, was there um, to support Patty Murray at Seattle Center. Um, and then just a few days ago, there was an event at the Showbox Theater, which is that grand old lady here in Seattle that Muddy Waters and Duke Ellington have played at and Gypsy oh, Rose yeah. Lee and people. So it was great to see the vice president there um, talking to her donors, basically, about how important it is to start throwing more money at Patty Murray because uh, a lot, in a large part due to the Trump pack, um, uh, her opponent, Tiffany Smiley, has raised more money in this campaign, which might be one of the reasons why she's rising in the polls. And so there was a debate in Spokane the other day at Gonzaga University. I think we may have lost uh, Mark for a second there. Hopefully his uh, video will become un unfrozen. There you go. Uh, why yeah, I was just saying what you said, Mark, we got a little bit frozen there. Uh, there was sort of a, uh, you know, I, I appreciate Patty Murray, of course, um, and don't want to see the seat um, go red, but I do, do have to admit, uh, just being objective, that she had sort of a lackluster debate there in Spokane. She just seemed very annoyed and irritated by the fact that she has a challenger because, you know, she's had the seat for almost 30 years now, and it's been a safe seat, safe Democratic uh, Party seat. So, you know, this is kind of a new thing, and it caught the Democrats off guard. So that race and also the eighth congressional district race between uh, Representative Schreier and Larkin is also within about three percentage points. So that's a really tight race there. And that could have some repercussions. The good news is, Jeff, we are going to have the first Democratic Party uh, Secretary of State in over in 60 years in Washington State. And I know that's that amazing. I don't know how you guys have got away with, you know, with that kind of, you know, voter suppression. You know, that's that's sort of a, a real testament to the people on the ground, the, the grassroots uh, workers who have been able to win Democratic seats um, for Senate and governor uh, over the last, you know, say, 20 years or so. Anyways, I know it wasn't very long ago that you had a couple of Republican senators there in the 90s, I believe. But, um, you know, that, yeah, that's... He was saying that there's been 327,000 voters purged from the voter rolls in Washington state since 2017 by 
Republican secretaries of state. So that was going on sort of under the radar because uh, it didn't tend to affect the final outcome of a lot of our elections here because the, the Democrats have been so strong, especially in the state legislature. But, you know, it, it is an ongoing story. And so I am uh, in communication with Greg Pallast about that because a lot of people were not aware of that. And you, by the way, you can check out my exclusive interview with Tina Podlikowski, the uh, chair of the Washington State Democratic Party at my YouTube channel at Mark Taylor Canfield. And I, I really appreciated a chance to pick her brains about what she thinks some of the greatest threats to democracy are during this uh, election. And she definitely said voter suppression, especially in Georgia, and uh, also dark money, because as she put it, billionaires yeah, they go are hand in hand. Effect. Yeah, she said yeah, this I is mean, a you know, they, is, uh, for people uh, to, to try to fix the vote. They need payrolls. They don't do it for nothing. <laughs> so yeah, you're, you're exactly I mean, right. My, my thought about this always, Jeff, is that, you know, our priorities are very skewed in the United States. If we just took half of that money that was spent on political ads and political campaigns and actually uh, paid for some affordable housing projects for people to get them off the street. It might really make a difference in people's lives. But instead, a lot of political consultants, a lot of TV and radio networks are making a lot of money off of this game of, you know, getting dark money into your pack and then sort of laundering it like drug money or mafia money and then getting it um, out into to affect these elections and, and influence the elections. So we really need to get money out of politics. Besides voter suppression, I think that's really something that Democracy Watch News should focus on and I'll, I'll lobby for is getting money out of elections because once you have more publicly financed elections, a lot of these problems hopefully would go away. I'm hoping. No doubt. And we're going to play some sound here coming up. Uh, just a heads up to our good friend uh, and great producer Josh uh, from uh, Vice President Harris that uh, our good friend Mark uh, Taylor Canfield brought with him. Um, before we do that, let me, let me ask you this, Mark. Is it is it the understanding that it is time that um, you know the political leadership in, uh, in Washington State understand um, what Bernie Sanders has built? I saw him last night with Karen Bass in Los Angeles. You know, she could have brought anybody in, and she's brought in some other people. But you know, it, it seemed like uh, that was a match made in heaven. Um, and as a matter of fact, I think when they held up each other's arms, it could be a ticket in 2024 if Biden decides not to run again. Um, you know, uh, are you feeling at all that, you know, that the progressive wing of the party has grown to a point, um, you know, successes of Jayapal, successes of Sawant, um, that they, they have a, I wouldn't say a clear path, but a path to a more powerful uh, position in leadership. Of course, Jay, Jay, Jayapal, even though I think she had a setback this week with the with the whole letter thing and all that regarding the uh, the war vote, um, you know. But I think there's something there. I mean, you guys were first with the minimum wage, first with marijuana, and you know these are all progressive legislation. Even in Inslee's, you know, green initiatives. I mean, these are. These are progressive ideas, and they're being led, um, you know, by champions like uh, like Jaya Paul and, and Bernie. Do you feel that they are finally accepting it? Because you know he's been more of an economic populist than he is, you know, sort of raging on social issues. Oh, I was hoping that Bernie would come and visit us here in Seattle, but instead he was he went to Portland and, and Eugene. But that's okay. He knows he's got solid support here. Um, Jeff, I see these progressive uh, ideals actually moving through the legislative system as well and actually not only just getting people like Pramila Jayapal elected uh, consistently with 80% of the vote, which is unheard of in most of the rest of the country, but also things like uh, the legalization of marijuana and we were one of the first uh, states to recognize marriage equality, all sorts of things like that and it's still happening because here in the city of Seattle, on the ballot right now, we have um, two measures which are meant to reform our political system here. And one of them is called ranked choice voting. Now, we already yeah. have instant runoff voting in our primary system here, which is why in the Secretary of State's race, there are actually uh, no Republicans. There is actually, uh, they lost in the primary, both of them. It's actually uh, Steve Hobbs, who was uh, actually appointed by... Um, 
Governor Inslee when uh, Kim Wyman, the former Secretary of State, resigned. But um, she, he's being opposed by an independent, he, Julie Anderson, who's uh, the Pierce County uh, auditor. But he's doing quite well in the polls. So um, folks are thinking that Steve Hobbs will be the uh, already is actually because of that appointment, the first uh, Asian American Pacific Islander to hold that office. Um, but there's also House or Senate Bill 5843, which is also meant to kind of clean up some of the electoral process. It's actually a bill that will prosecute people in um, official positions in government who spread lies about the election. So also Steve, jo Steve Hobbs also started a, a misinformation unit. And according to Podolikowski, that's the first secretary of state in the country who has a misinformation unit so that if there are lies being that's spread great. about the way the vote would they be need that the desperately uh, because I think you're going to, you're going to you know, come across this between now and November 8th and 9th and 10th and 11th if the Republicans lose by a couple of points because you know they're going to try to do that and they're going to try to steal as many votes as they possibly can. All right. Uh, again, uh, Vice President Harris was in town this week in Seattle and Mark got some sound. Let's uh, play a little bit of that right now, Josh. With what we are doing with some of our young leaders um, this morning on our way here and um, and one of them said to me I said well what is today about and they said saving our planet saving our planet so the youngest of our children understand not only their power but the importance I guess that's what brings it home in terms of the concluding. We owe it to our children to right now take these issues very seriously. The clock is ticking loudly. We are witnessing around our country and around the world the effects of extreme climate. There is a direct correlation that, thankfully, as we progress as a nation, is not being debated, which is the correlation between all of that and human behavior. And so what we are announcing today, and what we are as a community of friends, and parents, and leaders, what we are announcing today is a step forward in our nation's commitment to be a leader on these issues, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, to invest in our economy, to invest in job creation, to invest in building the skills of America's workforce, all with, as that young leader this morning said to me, goal of not only saving our children, but saving our planet. That was uh, Vice President to a huge ovation uh, there in uh, in Seattle. You know, it's interesting. He uh, or she uh, would would say that you know this is a commitment uh, to you know to kind of go forward. Is it um, one of these ideas uh, again that you know I, I would say that Biden has done some good things, but he's basically followed a path that Bernie Sanders has laid out and Jayapal as well. And, um, you know, when Harris talked about, you know, this is this is a step forward because, you know, frankly, they haven't made big advances. But, you know, nonetheless, the Democratic president talking about, you know, climate change, talking about other issues like that, you know, is still a, a step in the right direction. So kudos to the Biden-Harris team. Um, again, you know. I think it could be more. Sometimes they're they're reluctant to do it for whatever pushback they're going to get from the Republicans. The Republicans are bought and paid for. You know, you don't, you don't you ignore. You don't uh, try to respond in kind to the Republicans. Was it all Harris? You know, in any kind of uh, get together with the media, if she had one. You know, and all sort of you know just sort of give me a break. This sort of nonsense that comes out of the, the mouth of uh, McCarthy and, and McConnell and the, the right wing of the Republican Party. Well, that's what Joe Biden said the other day, right? He said, I don't want to hear it about the student debt yeah. relief. People who have received, one, in one case, $2 million from the 
of bailouts from the government. I mean, all the way back to, we just posted a picture of me burning my Bank of America card back in the Occupy Wall Street days, right? Because of the similar kind of thing where the main major banks uh, got bailed out. That photo of me ended up in the Washington Post and Associated Press and all over the world. So this kind of thing that we're talking about here has been going on for a long time. And then the neoliberals like Joe Biden have been all over it. I think um, Kamala Harris was here and she, she actually, when she was here, she said the right things um, for people like Jay Inslee and Pramila Jayapal. They, they wanted to hear something about green economy, green technology, green new deal. And so she delivered on that and she came to the right place to do that because that's why she got such a huge ovation. Most of the people actually at that event were either press or other public officials. So a lot of the cheering that you hear is actually coming from people who work in, in the system and are actually just happy to hear you know, a, a top government leader talk like we do here in the Pacific Northwest, because, you know, granted, 2,500 uh, school buses is uh, um, just a small part of the 12,000 that have already been requested, but they were able to set aside $1 billion through the bipartisan um, infrastructure bill. And, you know, that that is an accomplishment in itself. I mean, there's so much money going into the military industrial complex and going into these major campaigns and going to the pockets of billionaires and CEOs. You know, it's 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 time that uh, our top leaders in the federal government take on uh, those interests, just like FDR would and just say, hey, pay your fair share. I mean, come on. You're in this country, put up or shut up. You know what I'm saying? It's like if you're yeah. a patriotic American, no, I would, I would concur, and I'm glad to see that that they they are listening to what Bernie has done, and this has been a consistent approach. And you know, Clean has sort of offered an olive branch to the more progressive uh, lawmakers and and those, uh, including Bernie himself. Uh, you know, to the White House. And some of the other people, on the other hand, like uh, Bruce Reed, not so much. You know, that that door is closed. Uh, literally and figuratively. Um, it was good to we see go, Bernie, though, when he released that video that I shared with you and some other folks, he, he went out on his own. I thought, that was Bernie. That wasn't the DNC telling him, go out and make a quick video about oligarchy in the United States. You know, he did that because he had to, because he realized that probably the mainstream Democrats weren't going to say it, and they should be. They should be telling it like it is. And he understands, you know, from a working class point of view, I mean, come on, we're all getting a raw deal, so give me a break. We know. It's just the rich folks well, that are controlling yeah. I mean, the elections. You know, who, keeps, who keeps getting wealthier? It's not somebody making 35 or 70K a year. It's people making 70 million a year, um, you know, or 35 million a year. Uh, and and that's that's what the deal is. And, you know, frankly, you know, it's, it's people like that to just, you know, aggravate me to no end. Um, you know, when they said, oh, my, we're going to raise your taxes, oh, oh, you know, as if they really, you know, worried about, you know, if you're making $35 million or, or $70 million a year or, or even more, uh, that, you know, raising your taxes by 10% is going to really make a difference. To you. How about like Joe Sandberg working on? For, for every day, for how many how long now, Joe Sandberg is on Twitter talking about raising the minimum, minimum wage. wage. It's very simple. Right. Uh, my representative and friend in Congress, Pamela Jayapal, talks about it all the time. It has to be done. So you get the pushback, of course, from the business interests of the right wing who say, well, that'll cause more inflation. I'm like, look, if having a livable wage is going to cause a major economic crash or something, then maybe we need to re-examine the economic and political system. Maybe it's time to rethink some of this stuff because in Seattle, you, people aren't even applying for well, jobs. Do, man. Right here. That's no doubt. Right here. AMTC, take care of yourself. Great work this week for you, Harris, Warren, Podolowski, and all. Uh, hey, uh, enjoy your weekend, my friend. We will uh, talk to you next week. Election is uh, 11 days away. Talk soon, man. All the best. Check out Democracy Watch News. Jeff, best talk show in the USA. Thank you, bud. I want to thank uh, Josh and uh, Freddie for producing this broadcast today. Uh, folks, um, keep on fighting peacefully. Have a great weekend. My name is Jeff Santos. My time to say I got to go. And go Phillies.
peace action with over 9,000 supporters in the state. MPA uses the power of grassroots organizing to end war, create a more just foreign policy, and cut wasteful Pentagon spending to support the needs of the American people, like health care, education, infrastructure, and the environment. 20 years of war is long enough. To become a member or learn more, visit MassPeaceAction.org. Don't wish for peace, work for it.